Hello everybody, so today's guest is Beata from Event Boutique LA. She's in business almost 10 years now and she's gonna share some information and some history from this business and perhaps some tips, useful tips. And our sponsor today is ServiceJoy, servicejoy.com. It's an online invoicing software. A lot of events planners use it, a lot of catering businesses use it. So there we go, let's start. Hello, Beata. Hi. Okay, so the first question I think will be, what made you uh, be in this business, in wedding planning business, and uh, tell us about you and your company. We are a little bit over 10 years in business, in successful business, and um, the reason I'm here is because approximately nine years ago I created my private big event, and it was uh, very successful, and um, I actually it was a my passion more than a business when I did it and after this it made me uh, very sad it's over and I wanted to do it again and again and that's the main reason I went to this industry and I went to this business. And what is your educational background? Well my major education is a teaching credential but when I decided to go to this business I definitely need more education and uh, certification so I graduated from um, wedding planning institution online and I get certified for wedding and events planning. Describe the most challenging wedding event that you had uh, in past. I'm curious how you handled the problem also. Believe it or not, the most challenging wedding I had uh, is the wedding that was almost destroyed by a weather condition. Because usually in California it's never happened, but um, it was once, basically it was in San Diego when uh, we uh, set up, we were done with the setup for outside ceremony and it was beautiful by Marina and we checked the, uh, the forecast, everything should have been fine, however the last moment unexpectedly the rain started and the heavy one which was almost about to ruin the whole thing. So within 15 minutes, all my crew and the hotel personnel and everybody, we had to transfer the entire setup for the ceremony, arch and flowers and tables and chairs in the foyer of the hotel. And we had like 15 minutes for that. We were running like crazy, but uh, I guess didn't even feel it because it was, it started like 15, 20 minutes before the guest arrival scheduled. So we did it and we were very proud of ourselves. What happened to the flowers? Were they outside when the weather went bad or? They were, but it was rain. So they, it, they, they got wet, but it didn't ruin them. Was the event moved somewhere else or just inside? Or? The event was the original reception we scheduled for the inside ballroom. The ceremony should have been outside, but we managed to transfer it in the foyer inside. What about your uh, clients? Were they? Uh, not, not even satisfied, I'm assuming um, amazed by how your team was able to move everything back in there and then just make sure the, the event continues. They were kind of speechless, but at this moment we didn't even thought of it. We on Our only concern was to do it in time and with less damage. Are you a member of any wedding association? Absolutely. It's American Association of Certified Wedding Planners. It's one of the biggest in America. What was the most unique wedding that you remember that was out of ordinary? It was just the most amazing, interesting wedding that you remember. Well, for me personally, the most unique and out of ordinary wedding was uh, Winter Wonderland because I was born in Russia where the winter is very strong. So for me, it's like go a little bit back. And the one we did, it was actually in San Francisco. Winter Wonderland, we brought real snow, which was a big surprise for most of the guests. We did ice, ice ring with the theaters, you know, we created real uh, winter scene, like a full production, and even brought champagne, champagne chandelier. It's a girl that actually hangs upside down and pours champagne uh, to the guest glasses and she's on the level of your eyes. It's also very uh, amazing attraction, you know, when guests getting in and um, it was the most memorable for me. How did you get the real snow? 
uh, it's a production company that you can order it. Yeah, snow. it has to be a real snow and a machine that actually blow it in, and we had fifty tons of snow. Oh my God! It's costly, but it's doable. Do they do they actually make that real snow with the machine, or they actually brought it from somewhere that it's extremely cold? They just brought it. No, no, no. They they bring the ingredients. They make it on a spot. They blow it. They guarantee it for three hours. That's, That's all we needed. By the way, just two listeners, uh, I want to put some comment. We are on a Skype interview, so sometimes the quality is not as good as it, it should be. So we're going to have some bumps and uh, downs. So, yeah. How many full scale, like super large weddings um, you did in past? And uh, what was the, when was the last one? Uh, the, the most expensive was a couple years ago. It was actually uh, from the people who doesn't live here. They were from Moscow. But they want to get married here, definitely in Hollywood. So, um, without definitely saying any names or numbers, it was the sky was the limit, and it was amazing. Are there any celebrities involved? Uh, no, no celebrities, but lots of big people, big shots were there. And uh, how did they find you? Actually, I'm I'm just curious. Uh, how did they decided to work with you instead of somebody else? Did they know you already previously, or? They didn't know me in person. It was the word of mouth from friends from friends and that how they got me and they um, need somebody bilingual. Yeah, how many uh, wedding clients do you take a year and um, wh what do you think? How many do you expect in 2016? Um, average number a, a year, it's between 40 to 50 weddings. Approximately the same number I already have for my uh, 2016 and uh, I think that's a perfect number because I spent more time with my clients. I want it to be more private, more personal. I don't want to put it like a factory that I don't remember the name of the bride and the groom uh, next month. I, that's how I take it. And uh, do you expect to grow that number uh, next year or so you kind of want to stay in that uh, I, I kind of want to stay in numbers. these numbers mm -hmm. because I want each bride and groom to get enough personal attention and enough of my time. No wonder the company is called Boutique. You want right. to keep the quality and the service exactly. as Boutique as possible. Armenian weddings, specifically Armenian weddings. Um, how many have you done like last year, for example, in 2014? Um, between 12 to 14, I can't tell you exact number, but it was something like this over 10 for sure what's the cost of the average armenian wedding and i say armenian because this audience of ours is armenian and the uh, website is harsupesa.com which means bride and groom and yeah what, what's the average wedding that they have to wedding budget they have to think about in order to work with you for example if you're talking about the wedding budget first of all you should know by the guest number if it's a hundred people or three hundred people definitely mm -hmm. it's changed but average I would say roughly uh, from sixty seventy thousand to two hundred to hundred fifty thousand understood so that's the average and right based on your past experience with the wedding quantities that you're doing you're averaging in that like uh, price range not your services but the cost of the wedding I would say between 120 and 150 for approximately give or take 300 350 guests and what sort of services do you provide um, if you don't mind maybe you can just come up with a general list of the services that you do and also uh, we're gonna you know jump into vendors related questions right. later but for now what services you provide that the people you know can hear and understand we provide for the wedding every single wedding related services of course it's based on a contract that we have between us and bride and a groom but uh if it's a full service we do provide from a to z wedding related services we do logistics and design we do either or it's all depend on a bridal needs you also handle like invitations and like designing them printing them sending them all those uh, from major to minor things. Uh, from major to minor, everything was the only one little detail. We don't do them personally. We have a vendors that we put together, so we kind of do logistic. We put all the vendors, we refer the vendors, we uh, save your time on choosing the vendors. We uh, can save your money on recommended the right vendor for you, etc., etc. 
and that's what the wedding planning and coordination is it's not like one only flowers or only certain criteria or certain category it's all together and i'm assuming of course clients come back to you just because they they are satisfied with the idea of them being able to share what they are expecting to have generally and your expertise uh, helps them to kind of make the entire planning and then actually deal with the vendors and I'm assuming working with the wrong vendor it can not only be very costly but even a, a huge problem because uh, eventually imagine on the last moment you realize it's a wrong vendor then you have a scheduled date for the wedding and guests and everything so it has to be like laser sharp everything correct absolutely Absolutely, and that's what we do. If the client prefer to choose their own vendor for a certain reason, we do really good search on it and we do check every little detail. And I'm going to assume you don't do everything just by yourself. You probably have assistants, one or more. And um, what happens, for example, if you're uh, planned to be at the wedding and then, you know, God forbid you got sick and everything, so your assistants take over or like... How does this system work with your assistants? I have a team and the number of the girls that work with me on a field on a wedding that day, it's uh, depend on the size of the wedding. Usually it's between one and four. For the smaller size wedding, I take one assistant. For the bigger size, up to four assistants. If I got sick, which thank God never happened before, um, I have another coordinator, not an assistant, but full-time coordinator who works with me very close on every e event, as well as I work on her event, and so we can substitute each other at any time of the wedding. That's why I always have two people who are 100% involved in all the details of the, each wedding. Well, your clients, are they required to... Um go with the vendors that you provide or you uh, refer to or they're free to have their own vendors or how does this work with you when they're working with you particularly? We do have uh, a team of preferred vendors which was carefully chosen during all these years and we can guarantee and sign off for every single one of them. However, of course, they can bring their own if they have somebody in mind if it's uh, from the wedding industry and we do know them, we have absolutely no problem to work. If it's somebody new we never knew and never heard of, we definitely do a double search and double check in order to secure and make sure. And that's how it usually works. If I see any alert, I always let my bride know that I would be careful on choosing, but I definitely cannot restrict her on choosing her own. Basically, if they have their own vendor and they, they want to work with that vendor, They're free to, of do course. you stay in touch directly with the vendor to be able to work with them? But then if there is a red flag, you feel like something is really not uh, sounding right, that you, you contact back to your client and let them know. Correct. I alert the bride and then we'll take it I'm from there. I'm how, curious, how often do they actually uh, listen to you and they really consider that? Do you remember any story from your past experience that the vendor was, I don't want to say terrible, but was you felt something is wrong with it and then you contacted the uh, uh, your, your clients and then they didn't really listen to you they kind of pushed forward with the vendor and then eventually the problem actually happened do, do you recall any uh, yeah it was story? it was only one time in my entire experience when the when this happened and it was a florist that i never heard of i never she was not familiar in the wedding industry she was old brother no uh, whatsoever but they still choose to take her because it was a uh, price related issues mm -hmm. and uh, believe it or not she didn't show up on the wedding day just wow. she forgot about the wedding at all she didn't reject she didn't cancel she, she actually forgot think she didn't call she didn't reject she just took her deposit and didn't show up so it was not a price issue anymore at that same day we couldn't find her she didn't answer the phone so i had to call one of my trusted vendor and just beg to save the situation which was done definitely the flowers was different from it was originally ordered but at this point nobody cared but there was the situation it was of course different arrangement whatever she had handy in her store she brought and she fixed it right away but um, that's also very important to have a background check on each single 
vendor on their liability and everything else. In terms of a background check, do you actually uh, use any tools or you just use the power of Google? Google, search, reviews, referrals, how long in business, who did you do business with, etc., etc. You know, let's say they have a beautiful website which is not a huge deal and then at some point you're like uh, but I never heard of them and then you go online and you can't find any reviews on them is it already considered as a kind of a it's an alert yeah it's kind of yeah red a little bit of a red flag for me so basically if they're experienced and they're in business for so long there is no way they don't have reviews there is no right? way we never heard or saw or knew about them are you making sure their contracts are uh, properly laid out and um, do you review the contract for your client or do vendors work with you directly or directly uh, with the client you're just in between being a consultant uh, tell us about that part usually the moment we sign the contract between events boutique and uh, bride and a groom or one of them I become the only contact person for them they don't have to call each single vendor and verify or check or change. However, we're not always present at the meetings and it's dependent on a contract we have. If it's a full planning, then we definitely do. If it's a partial planning or a major help with the wedding details, then we're not present, but we do check every single contract and make sure it's signed correctly. And do you do, for example, destination weddings? We've done a lot of destination weddings in Hawaii, in Mexico, because we're close by. Uh, San Diego, San Francisco, tons of them. Um, New York, Chicago. We do all this. And do you usually coordinate all the deliveries and arrivals and such, for example, for guests or accessories? Every, everything you. It's the same services as. I would do here with the only difference it requires me to go to the destination a few times to make sure everything is, is... So actually, I take this responsibility of bride and groom. They don't have to go. I can go check, make sure everything is prepared, correct? And then we provide same services. We have a contract with few uh, wedding sites in each of our destination spots. And uh, we do it successfully for many years. Do you plan honeymoons? Do you have any services or packages that can include honeymoon or separate, uh, all those extra costs or whatever, maybe it's included in a contract? Tell us about honeymoon part. No, usually we're not taking care of the honeymoon, but we have a few um, a travel agencies that specialized in honeymoon, and we always can recommend if we get this question, but uh, we don't take care of any uh, honeymoons or any um, travel after wedding. What about the dresses, for example, wedding dresses? Do your, any, any of your packages include finding a wedding dress or the designer or... Um, any services that are kind of related to finding the right dress? We refer people to the stores that, uh, again, based on our experience, are the most popular and has the most success in finding dresses. We don't uh, offer the dress in our packages, but we do have few vendors. Uh, for example, if your clients eventually you know, book with you, how long does it take for you to produce the contract? between 24 to 48 hours the most is it related to the size of the wedding or how many vendors they have to work with it's only related to the details upon our agreement if they want to go for the full i have to describe every responsibility that it's covered or if it's a partial or even for the day off i only have to describe in writing what the contract covers and what for them to expect. All right, so but usually a couple of days maximum. 48 hours is the most, unless it's a Saturday or Sunday when I'm involved with the wedding. So anytime people can call you or like, do you have certain business hours? I have business hours, which is nine to six, the usual, but of course uh, they know any emergency situation, they can call me off hours or they can text me at any time. How do you charge? Your services and um, is there any percentage upfront or wedding cost related percentage or like a flat rate or a minimum it's a flat amount for, depend on a contract they choose at the moment of the signing of the contract they do pay deposit somewhere around five hundred dollars and the balance 
also depend on a contract they pay two three days before the wedding what about payment methods it can be check or can be credit card or cash any form of payment is there any fee that eventually accumulates let's say they come up with a contract but some things changed it be the weather related problem or some things that were beyond your control or the you know unexpected things happen that actually add up on your hours um, how do you work in this situation and uh, w what is the requirement from your client in terms of financials? You're talking about the cancellation policy? Not actually a cancellation policy. Uh, that's another question, by the way. But uh, right now I'm more, more curious about uh, things happen, unplanned things happen. But uh, one of your stories include, uh, included the we weather related problem that you guys had to, to really change a lot of things. Or, for example, the flower related issue that you had to contact your you know one of the trusted vendors have them rapidly come up with some solution bring it you know probably it could even cost more than average because it was on a very last second all those things uh, are they really included in your entire contract or you actually come up with another invoice just because of those changes and uh, how do you deal with those unexpected changes well, if it's unexpected changes that involves additional payment or additional money, I definitely go over uh, over it with bride and groom, and it's based on their agreement. I will not do any financial decision without their approval. So if it's uh, due to weather changes, of course, uh, it's uh, based on our mutual uh, agreement. If they want to change and do it, different time all over again of course it could create a little extra mm -hmm. but we usually confirm it we don't do any on-spot decision without yeah both you don't you don't just give them unexpected uh, surprises oh, no 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 i don't does your company or you yourself uh, have any uh, awards related to this uh, event planning or like wedding planning we certainly do. We have Bright's First Choice Award uh, every single year, started 2010. Wow. Since 2010 until 2010, today? Every year we have, we are winning this Bright's First Choice Award. It's based on our customers' reviews. So we have a lot of reviews and based on this, we get this reward. And um, probably last question would be, uh, about your uh, cancellation uh, or refund policy or cancellation policy, what what your clients uh, should know about that? Let's say, you know, I, I wish it never happens, but pe people <laughs> just decide in the last second not to marry or they change their plans how to marry, when to marry and where to marry and with whom to work with. Um, yeah. So the cancellation policy uh, with your company, how does that work? Well, it's also uh, a little bit depend on the reason of the cancellation. If it's just because they decided to do a different time or different approach or whatever different and it's called no reason cancellation, then it's a 50% within 30 days or less and 25% within uh, 60 to 90 days. If it's an emergency situation, family death or God forbid, something like this issues, then I take it based on a situation. Sometimes it's no fee even. After somebody watching this uh, conversation, if they want to get in touch with you and ask questions, be your client, how do they find you? Our website is www.eventsboutiquela.com. It has all the information about us, our contact number, but in addition, our phone number is 818 area code 457 1707. And they can uh, call a certain hour or really any any time is okay? Our business hour for general calls is 9 to 6 and if it's any emergency uh, they can pretty much text or call anytime. Do you have anything to add? Do you want to say anything to the audience? I would be happy to uh, help you guys with your future weddings and uh, be part of your big day if I can. Um, thanks a lot for being here, uh, spending your time with uh, me on this interview and uh, sharing your experience. And uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, that's basically it for now. It's my pleasure. Thank you.